and welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and which lands should be you be putting in your blue commander decks? I'm continuing my series here of lands that you should put in decks that obviously are specific colors. I did my green one already, so if you're in a mono green deck or any deck that has green, you can play any of those lands. And for this list, if you're in a mono blue deck or any deck that has blue, these are all your options. Probably more specifically, I would say a mono mono blue deck or possibly a two color deck that has blue in it you're definitely going to want to give consideration to a lot of these lands so for example the cycling lands as i mentioned in my other video they all enter the battlefield tap the big difference being that the cycling cost is different we have the one blue the two colorless and then the colorless and the blue option really at the end of the day it just depends on how many cycling lands you want to put in in the green video i had said i would probably put all three of the cycling lands in a mono green deck mostly because for green it's a lot easier to get lands into play so later in the game when you draw that land off the top you really don't need it you cycle it away to get something more useful that's essentially what it boils down to how many am i going to put on a mono blue deck i don't know maybe two the issue here is how many lands do i want to have in my deck that come into play tapped right you don't want to have too many also how many non-basic lands do i want to have in my deck sometimes you don't want to have too many of those as well again the storage land I have Saprazan Cove here and Sand Silos. They both enter the battlefield tapped. Saprazan Cove, you tap to put a storage counter on it. And then you can tap, remove any number of storage counters from it and add that much blue mana. So it's sort of a way to store. It's a storage land, right? That's the whole reason it's called that. You're storing up mana. I wouldn't call it ramp again. The wording can get confusing here. This is a ritual effect for me. I store it up and then I use it all at once. It's not like you're going to tap this land for four mana every single time you tap it. It's a one shot deal. Same with sand silos. This one, you may choose not to untap it during your untap step. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if it's tapped, you can put a storage counter on it. Then you can tap, remove any number of storage counters on it to add that much blue. So essentially they work exactly in the same way. The only difference is one stays tapped and the other one you tap to add counters. It is an option if you need that big mana boost in a blue deck. Maybe your commander costs a lot. The only problem is getting these cards out later in the game is not very good. You, you really got to get these early, like preferably turn one. Fairy Conclave is your man land option. Comes into play tapped. You can tap it to add a blue. It's always good when these utility lands actually add the blue mana that you're going to need for your deck. And then you can play one in a blue. Fairy Conclave becomes 2-1 blue. Fairy creature token with flying till end of turn. This is a particularly good one. I've, I've put this in a few decks. For one, because it's a fairy. So anyone who's playing a fairy deck, this could be good. But mostly because it has flying. It's an evasion creature. So any deck you're playing where you want to be getting in for damage or getting damage triggers, this is a great option to have a creature that sort of comes out of nowhere and can swing and get in for that damage. Halimar Depths is a pretty popular one. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised how popular it is in the format. It enters the battlefield tapped and when it enters the battlefield, you look at the top three cards of your library and put them back in any order and you can tap it to add a blue. So, you know, I've never put this in any deck personally myself. It comes into play tapped. It's not card advantage at all. On turn one, this is great. You know, I love the Temple series of lands. I put them in all my decks and I love that first turn scry one. I really like, I put my temple into play turn one and I can scry. And if I already have a lot of lands in my hand and if there's a land on top, I can tuck it on the bottom. If I need more lands in hand and it's not a land, I tuck it on the bottom. Typically that's what I use those for. This though, you can't tuck anything away but you can set up your first couple of turns on what you're going to draw, which is helpful. If you draw it on like turn four or five, though, maybe not great. You can, yes, shuffle things away. If you don't like what you see on top of your library, maybe you can crack a fetch land. I don't know. It's also can be good if you're in any deck where you want to be setting up the top of your library for whatever purposes, maybe an Aminatu deck. Like I said, I've never put it in a deck myself, but it is an option for you if you have a blue deck. Ipnu Rivulet. This is a desert. You can tap to add a a colorless to your mana pool and then you can tap and pay one life to add blue to your mana pool so not as good you still can get that blue mana if you want and you can pay one in a blue and tap sacrifice a desert target player mills four cards so it's just an option if you're in a milling deck you know four cards not a lot but if you got room to throw this in your deck it doesn't come into play tap so that's pretty good i know if i'm playing a milling deck i probably am definitely putting this in there also you can mill yourself so maybe if you're playing a self mill deck you want to give this an inclusion 
option. Keep in mind also, it sacrifices itself because it's a desert, but if you do have other deserts, this can be a repeatable effect. You don't have to sack it to itself. You can sacrifice, say, your Desert of the Mindful if you have one of those in your deck as well, so that is an option. Memorial to Genius. This is the blue version of the Memorial series, and again, this is a whole series of cards that I'm really surprised don't get played in Commander more. Enters the battlefield tap, but it does add that blue, so you don't have to worry about not getting the blue mana you want. And you can pay four in a blue, sacrifice Memorial to Genius, draw two cards. Seems pretty good to have a land that you're just going to have it sitting in play and using it for mana the whole game and then later in the game when you need some answers you can sacrifice to draw two cards i mean that seems pretty good moon ring island and this one is actually an island so again the types here sometimes matter you can go fetch this with a misty rainforest or something like that anything that gets specifically an island and of course because it's an island it taps for blue mana comes into play tap pay a blue and tap look at the top card of target players library play this ability only if you control two or more blue permanents so you have to control two blue permanents that's not typically hard especially in a mono colored deck and just allows you to look at the top card of target players library Library. I mean, I'm sure there's some decks out there that might want to use that effect, whether it be I want to look at the top card of my library, or maybe I want to look at the top card of an opponent's library. Oboro Palace in the Clouds. This is a legendary land. So tap to add one blue to your mana pool. So again, there's there's not really any downside here. It doesn't come into play tap. You don't have to pay life. The only downside is a legendary land, which in Commander isn't much of a downside. And also pay one return Oboro Palace in the Clouds to owner's hand. So this gets used a lot. I mean, it's great in a land. Landfall deck, if you're in a mono blue landfall deck, like a Cosima deck, for example, it's a great fit because it's just going to guarantee you get that landfall that you might want. It can be really good in a Baron deck where you want to be returning stuff to your hand so you can draw a card. You can just pay one, return this to your hand, get to draw a card at your end step. Pretty fantastic. Also, it can just save itself from destruction. You know, if you're in a play group where guys like to cast Armageddon's, this can be pay one, I return a land to my hand so that I guarantee. I'm going to at least have one land drop. Mystic Sanctuary. And of course, this is one that gets played a ton. People are probably already very aware of it, I think. A real powerhouse in like modern, for example. Maybe less so in Commander. Again, it is an island, so you can actually go fetch this, which is one of the reasons what makes it such a powerful card. And of course, because it's an island, it taps for blue mana. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more other islands. So in a mono blue deck, that's probably not going to be a huge issue. And when it enters the battlefield, battlefield untapped okay so it has to enter the battlefield untapped in order to get this ability and you probably definitely want this ability you may put target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library you can definitely get into some shenanigans there if you've ever seen this in action in other formats riptide laboratory tap to add a colorless mana and you can pay one in a blue, tap, return, target, wizard you control to owner's hand. So obviously this is probably going to go in any wizard tribal deck, I would imagine. Also though, just like with a lot of the other lands I talk about, like Wirewood Lodge, if your commander is just a wizard at all, you probably want to put this in your deck. Check if your commander is a wizard, because this can just save your commander from a board wipe. Just pay two mana, return your commander to your hand, every other creature gets killed, and then you can just leisurely play it again on your turn. Wizard is a very popular creature type. Check your commander if it's a wizard and it's blue, I guess. Not going to work in a store of deck, but if it's a wizard and it's blue, probably you want to give this some consideration. Sheldock Isle has Hideaway. This land enters the battlefield tapped when it does look at the top four cards of your library exile one face down and put the rest on the bottom of your library taps to add a blue mana and you can pay a blue and tap you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost if a library has 20 or fewer cards in it so great in a mill deck however you know that activation there a 20 or fewer cards in it is really tough in commander i don't even think i've ever seen this in a commander game because it is really tough to get that condition met in a commander game because the libraries are so darn big this is the hideaway cycle of lands obviously this is probably the one i've seen the least i, I really don't think i've seen it in a game ever probably would imagine if you're playing a bruvac like mono blue mill deck Maybe you could give this some consideration. I don't know if I would go even with a two-color deck with this, though. Coral Atoll enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you return an untapped island you control to owner's hand. Tap, add a colorless and a blue. So this is just a land where it's going to tap for more mana. If you have untap effects, that's always great. You're going to have to return a land to your hand, so it helps with any landfall strategy. Again, a Cosima deck is going to want a card like this. I put this in my Cosima deck. A Baron deck... 
again, also is going to want a card like this because you're returning something to your hand, which is always good in a deck like that. A lot of different ways to use a card like this. So Devi Excavations, very similar card. One of my personal favorites that I've put in a few decks. If Sol Devi Excavations would enter the battlefield, sacrifice an untapped island instead. If you do, put Sol Devi Excavations onto the battlefield. If you don't, put it into owner's graveyard. So very complicated wording there, because just so people don't get into certain shenanigans of tapping their lands in response to sacrificing it and whatnot. Essentially what it means is you're going to play it and you're going to sacrifice an untapped island and it taps to add a colorless and a blue. And particularly what I like about this one is it doesn't come into the battlefield tapped. I really like that. It's a land that taps for two mana, but it doesn't enter the battlefield tapped. You can use it right away. Not a lot of those lands do that. Also, you can pay one and tap to scry one. Really underrated land. I, I don't see it in the format hardly at all, and I really think it could go on a lot of decks. Cephalid Coliseum. Tap, add one blue. Cephalid Coliseum deals one damage to you. That's not great. However, it has Threshold, so when you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, pay one blue and tap, sacrifice Cephalid Colosseum. Target player draws three cards, then discards three cards. So this can be used on any player, which is important. This card actually gets used in CEDH a ton because it is a counter effect for Thassa's Oracle, which of course is the number one win con in CEDH. Basically what happens is someone plays their Thassa's Oracle, Demonic Consultation, I exile my whole library, and then in response to their library getting exiled, you have to wait until their library is exiled, then you activate this and you force them to draw three cards. And because they have no cards in their library, they lose the game, right? If someone is supposed to draw a card and they can't, they automatically lose. So before their Thassa's Oracle trigger resolves, they're already dead. Other than that, though, okay, if you have someone who has that Thassa's Oracle in their casual deck, right, I make these lists for casual mostly, but if there is a guy in your playgroup that likes to play that Thassa's Oracle in casual games, this is the way to counteract it. Also, though, it's just great for looting. Maybe you're playing a deck where you want to be putting stuff in your graveyard, drawing three and pitching three things in your graveyard can be really good. Castle Vantress, and this is the blue version of the Castle series again. Why this isn't legendary, I'm not sure, but... I digress. Castle Vantress enters the battlefield tapped unless you control an island. So that's not much of a drawback. I mean, in a mono blue deck, that's almost never, unless you play this on turn one. Taps to add a blue, and you can pay two blue blue and tap to scry two. So not a super overwhelmingly fantastic effect. Paying four mana and tapping a land, so essentially you're using five lands to scry two. That's not great. However, there's almost no downside. So if you got some room in your mono blue deck, why not chuck this in there? You never know when you're going to need to scry two. Academy Ruins. And I'm, again, this is another one I'm sure we've all seen before. Legendary land. Tap to add a colorless mana. Pay one in a blue. Put target artifact card from your graveyard on top of your library. So we all know this goes in an artifact deck. In particular, any deck where maybe you want to be reusing certain artifacts. Famously, it goes with Mind Slaver. You can get into a Mind Slaver lock. The Mind Slaver lock doesn't work so good in a four-player game. In a two-player game, I guess once you get down to one opponent, you could do it. You sacrifice your Mind Slaver, and then you put it back on top of your library and rinse and repeat. So I think we all know how this card gets used. Soaring Sea Cliff. Soaring Sea Cliff enters the battlefield tapped. When Soaring Sea Cliff enters the battlefield, target creature gains flying until end of turn. Again, a very usable ability. Also taps to add blue mana. So just that slight downside of coming into the battlefield tapped, you know, I would say probably, I don't know, maybe 10 lands tops you want in your deck that come into play tapped. You know, it, it depends how fast you want to be going. I would also include in that 10 the optional, right? The, the lands that come into play optionally, like Castle Vantress has the option of coming into play untapped. So including those, I definitely wouldn't go over 10. Being able to give one of your creatures flying until end of turn, that can be a very usable ability in certain decks especially if you want to be getting in for damage. Manamo, School at Water's Edge. Legendary land again, and tap to add blue mana. And again, not really any downside here, right? Doesn't come into play tap, no paying life, none of that shenanigans, just really is almost no reason not to put this in your blue decks. And it has pay blue and tap, untap target legendary permanent. That is such a fantastic and very usable ability in a commander game. I mean, obviously, the first thing is if your commander has a tap ability and it's blue, this should be going in your deck. And we know there's a ton of those. There's an absolute ton of blue commanders 
that want to be tapping and then you untap them and you can use their ability again on the same turn. Really can go in a lot of decks. Also, it is a permanent. Okay, you can untap a legendary permanent with this. So say, for example, you have a Simic deck. You can untap your Gaia's Cradle with this. It is a legendary permanent. So you can tap it for five or six or 10 mana, pay one blue, untap it, and then you get to use it again. So really fantastic card. I'm surprised I don't see it more in the format. And lastly today, another one I'm surprised I don't see more in the format. And of course, price is always an issue here. Maybe that's part of the reason. But I think a lot of the reason sometimes can be people just don't know these cards exist. Tolaria West, and I've talked about this card already in my abilities that I would like to see revisited video. I talk about Transmute a lot. I really like that ability. And a lot of people are say, you know, oh, the format doesn't need more tutors. Yeah, but I, I don't think the guy playing the Vampiric Tutor and the Demonic Tutor is going to take those out of his deck to put Transmute cards in there. I really don't. Like, Transmute already doesn't get played much in the format. So what's the harm in making more Transmute cards? It's not going to make some busted, super powerful deck more powerful because those guys are already playing the most powerful tutors. All Transmute is going to do is let the other people who don't have those really expensive powerful tutors sort of catch up to everyone else right so i would love to see more transmute cards this is a transmute card it enters the battlefield tap you tap it to add one blue and it has transmute one blue blue and for those who haven't been watching my channel long and don't know what that does discard this card search your library for a card with mana value zero reveal it and put it into your hand then shuffle transmute only as a sorcery so what makes this particularly good and maybe better than any other transmute mute card is first of all it gets lands any of the other cards on this list it can go get this is a blue tutor for lands one of the only options you have for tutoring lands in blue but also it goes and gets anything that just costs zero mana you can go get your ancestral vision with this you can go get your mana crypt with this you can go get your pact of negation with this just a really versatile card i've put it in a few decks again you got to be careful with when you're playing a certain amount of colors how badly do you need this you know is there a land in your deck that you need really really badly and and maybe I'm playing a Jeske deck that doesn't search for lands very well, so I need that option. Maybe I'm going to put this in there. For me personally, I don't think I would put this in a three color deck unless I really, really needed to use that ability. But in a mono blue deck, there's no reason not to put this in there. I, I would put this in every mono blue deck as long as cost wasn't an issue because I can just go get any other land I want off of this list or anything else in my deck that has a mana value of zero. So that is it for today. That is lands that you should or could be putting in your blue commander decks, whether they be a mono blue deck or any deck that has blue in it at all. That is it for today, and thanks for tuning in.